Hi there, guys. My name is Chris Bowden. I'm here with Dustin Dwyer from NPR, who's come out with his professional rig. And you've got really neat toys. We've got to talk about those. <laughs> and uh, you get mic flags and everything. I mean, look at this. He gets, hey, I want a mic flag. Somebody, get, send us a geek group mic flag. We, we need one of need these. need to have a pledge drive. That's how we go. I need a pledge drive. That's, <laughs> see, that, we're, we're doing it wrong. But we're hanging out here with Dustin from NPR, and he wanted to come down and find out what's going on with the geek group and what we do and how we do all the stuff that we do. And we've had a lot of viewer mail where people are like, you know, what, what is this place? We know you're not just videos. I mean, you blow stuff up, and it's cool with the will it, will it fry and all that, but you know, what do you do? So we're going to give Dustin the nickel tour and give him an interview, which is something we don't do a lot of. I'm kind of big on avoiding the interviews and all that jazz, but we like NPR because they're geeks, and we're geeks, so we get along cool. And we're going to show you guys out there the basics of the geek group and why we're not just videos on the internet. We're actually a real place where you can come and get involved and create things and explore and have fun. So there's my intro. Now let's do yours. What, what do you want? Well, I, I want to know uh, how you got started in this to begin with. I'm going to assume you've been a geek for a long time. How did you yeah, become part of for the life. geek group? Um, this started just as the natural outgrowth of who I am. I, I, I am a geek. I tinker, I build. I, I, today it's all, you know, suit and tie and we're official professional being <laughs> that guy. Hi there, we're with the geek group and all. And it's, this isn't me. I'm a jeans and t-shirt guy. I grew up in Coopersville. I'm a redneck farm boy. And when I was a kid, I liked to drag things home and take them apart. And my dad spent an obscene amount of money replacing tools that I would break uh, and, and just exploring stuff just because I wanted to see how things worked. And there's a group of people out there like that. We live in an age that is completely governed by science and technology. I mean, I, how many gadgets do you carry with you on a normal daily basis, aside from the stuff you carry for work? I mean, you've got your cell phone, your Blackberry, your iPod, your, all that stuff. People don't understand how these things work, and yet our entire life revolves around them. We're, we're slaves to technology, and when they break, nobody knows how to fix it. Nobody understands the, the basic fundamentals. And we're a place for the people that want to hack them, that, that want to void their warranty, that want to explore, and, and they want to know how it works. And it can be something as simple as a, a toaster or how to properly use certain tools, like how to use a hammer. There's a whole world of people out there who don't know how to use a socket wrench right. And this is a place where people can come, and we completely sidestep all the just nonsense political correctness. I mean, this is a place where you're going to get dirty, you're going to skin a knuckle, you're going you're gonna to deal with the real world, and you have to be self-responsible. You have to use things like critical thinking, and logic, and reason, and common sense, and oh, wow, just these whole things that nobody ever talks about anymore. It's, it's, it's grandpa stuff, man. It's, it's let's go to work. Let's get excited and build something, and get off the computer, and, and actually deal with people. What a concept, real people that, that you know, may have opinions that differ from yours, that, that may smell funny or whatever. You know, it's, it's get off Facebook, get off Twitter. Let's deal with real people and build real things. And it's tangible, it's, it's brick and mortar. It's not just some crazy guy on the internet blowing stuff up. Yeah, except that I mean, a lot of there are probably lots of geeks out there in the world that uh, like all those ideas, but they still have to do data entry for a living. They've got to, you know, how did you make it to this point where you've got an entire warehouse basically where you can play all day? Because, God, that's a hard one. Well, um, what happened? <laughs> how did you? Okay, like, so how did we, we get, get to, to where we are? To, yeah. What were you doing before you did this, and how did you get to do this? This is it. I've done this since I was 18. I mean, this is this is my whole life. I, I've, I've had a couple odds and ends jobs here and there. I owned a recording studio for a while, but now that's a part of this. And it started out when I was a kid. I couldn't get financial aid because my parents made too much money, and I did not exactly have a sunshiny relationship with my parents. All I wanted out of the house was me. And by launching out on my own, like I did at a very young age, I had a monumentous problem of getting a real degreed education. So I hacked college. And I, I went to Grand Valley, I lived on campus, it was great, but I never enrolled. I couldn't afford to, and I couldn't get the financial aid to do it. But I wanted to learn. And I found very quickly that if you actually have a sincere, passionate desire to learn, and you don't care about the degree, that the whole world is a school. I mean, you can walk into a library, and now with the, with the internet, I mean, it, it changes everything. And the knowledge is there, you just have to want it. And because of that, based on that concept, 
we want to build a university-sized environment, a, a national science center, we're calling it Avalon, and the idea is, imagine an environment like MIT, or, or any Stanford, any large-scale research university, and all the resources that come with that, research labs and, and the faculty and all of that, and throw away tuition and exams and uh, everything that makes it an accredited degree granting institution. Because when you do that, you have to meet all those rules. Throw the rules away. The rules don't work. We're not here to replace college. The world needs that. And, like you went to college, but you went to college to get a degree, to get a job in your field to do your thing. What you learned along the way is, is moot. You need the piece of paper at the end. There's a whole world of people out there that don't care about the piece of paper because in the 21st century the piece of paper doesn't matter as much as it used to. It, what matters is what can you do? What can you produce? And we want to create an environment where you've got the university support, you, you're standing on the shoulders of giants, but you also are free to learn what you want to learn in the way you want to learn it at the rate you want to go. And it, it, it gets rid of the lowest common denominator. And that changes everything. But how do you pay for it? I mean, universities, you charge tuition, and you're paying for that to get that piece of paper. How do you pay for Avalon? Well, first, we're a national nonprofit, so we live and die on donations. That's a huge thing. And it's, it's not just like we, we try to, we, we specifically avoid all government funding. We have, I, we did not get the Obama bailout package or any of that crap. I, we'd love one. If they want to send us a check, go for it, but we haven't asked. Um, we have no major gigantic, like the, you, you go to Grand Rapids and all the buildings have the same five people that they're named after. You know, it's the same in Kalamazoo. We don't have that. Our support comes from real people, guys like you, that kick in 20 bucks or 100 bucks. Um, the Future Girl Foundation has been a huge supporter of us. They, they spend about $25,000 a month here. And we get massive support from industry because what we do is real, because what we do is tangible. Uh, Haas, the largest manufacturer of CNC tooling in the Western world, just donated a quarter million dollars worth of equipment to us. And they do that because Haas gives us the machines. Now, we're going to take and make a hundred videos on each machine that will go on our website that take people through step by step of this is a three jaw chuck and this is how it works and this is how to do that. And we break it all down really, really simple. And because we're not doing this like traditional media, where with traditional media, it's like, hey, here's this neat, shiny thing, and you can buy it here for $39.99. And, and they just glance over all the basics. We, because the way we're set up, can really get deep into it and, and cover things at a level that nobody else is and actually teach people about the stuff they want to learn about. And if you want to learn about this specific thing, you go on our website, you watch a video, and there it is. If you want to come here and actually do it in real life, you walk in the door, and there's the machine, and you can play with it. And if you want to learn how to run a, a Haas TL1 milling machine, there's one sitting in the next room, and you can come down here anytime you want and just play. And we make these tools and everything available to people. And the way it's set up, every single aspect of the geek group feeds itself. Everything here has a way to have a revenue stream. And once we get set up at a larger scale, the entire operation is self-supporting. We don't need to do a, a pledge drive, because once we're, done, once we're past the venture capital stage, Everything feeds itself, so we don't have to worry about that. So the, the things that people build here, you'll sort of take an ownership in that? No, you'll no. Um, we have a lot of some. There's group projects where people come in and we'll build a really big thing in the geek group, like the camera crane or one of the geek mobiles or something like that. But you could just have an idea. And there's a whole world of people out there that have really great ideas. They just don't know what to do with it. You could come up with a nifty idea for uh, microphone housing. Okay. But you don't know anything about metalworking. You don't know computer aid design. You don't, you don't know these things. But you can. You're not stupid. You're a smart guy. You can learn this stuff. And we can teach you. And you can come here and say, I've got this idea, and, and it's in my head, and I need, to, I need to get it in my hand. And we can take you step by step through computer aided design, the, the CNC machining process, the metallurgy involved, the electronics. Like you, you build your housing, and then you take it over to the next room, and we'll do the electrical engineering to wire it up. And then we'll take you to the art shop, and we'll paint it and make it pretty, and put all the lettering and the designs on it. And then you can go over to web design, and they can make a website showcasing your thing, and you can make a million of these, and we don't want any of the profits. It's yours, it's your idea, it's your concept. We want you to kick us a couple bucks for helping take you through the process. It might be like five or ten bucks an hour, but that's nothing because what you've done now is you have 
this massive power and resources of the geek group that allows you to do your own research and development. There's companies like GE or Ford or anybody like that, they pay millions of dollars a year to have this big R&D department. You know, it's this whole building of crazy guys that just come up with new stuff. That's their thing. They just come up with new stuff. And they have all these resources. They have a machine shop. They have an electronics lab. They have, well, we are the R&D department for the world. And you can just walk in the door with an idea and walk out a couple months later with a prototype and go and make a million of them and, and make billions of dollars and be successful and do your thing. And we don't want any money for that. That's, it's your idea, take it. I mean, please, remember us come tax time. <laughs> yeah, we'd love a nice little tidy donation. I mean, send us a few grand. If you go out and make a million dollars, on a send us 10 grand. If you own it, it'd be nice. But if you don't, okay, well then just, you suck. And you know, but <laughs> I, it's, it's we're, we're putting faith in people. We're believing in people. And we've learned time and time again that if you, if you put faith in people, if you give them the resources and you let them think for themselves and you treat them like they're intelligent, instead of giving everybody the lowest common denominator and just assuming that people are idiots, if you let them think for themselves, they will amaze you with what they can come up with. And we've never, ever had a time where somebody came in here and took advantage of us like that. And it's been universally positive. And you're able to keep the doors open, you know, just charging a couple bucks an hour or whatever it is to help people with Once their Once we ideas. get operating at that level, yes. Right now, we're losing money hand over fist. Um, but, and we've been doing it that way for years. But we've exploded with growth lately. And we've proven the concept. We've, we've gone through our feasibility study and proved that if we do this at the scale that we want to do it, it will generate the revenue that we need to make it happen. Because there's... there's a thousand little aspects to it. And I'll give you the nickel tour and show you just a taste of it. But some stuff, like right now we're sitting on our sound stage. Mm -hmm. Now this nine to five is where we make our educational videos. And we sit here and we talk about TVs or we talk about blue boxes or, or high voltage or physics or chemistry or whatever. But at the same time, you could come here with a local band and say you want to make a music video for your band, for your, your college guys. You know, half a dozen guys, college classes, and you just come down and you want to make a music video and put it on YouTube. Okay, well you can come here and for like 500 bucks, you know, whatever it costs us in materials and time and you know, reasonable, but cheap. Something that you can afford, you can make a real professionally produced music video with shot in high def and professionally edited and all that. So you're set, you get what you need without having to go to a proper production house where it's gonna cost you 500 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. And so you win, but what that does is it empowers you with the ability to do that stuff and it's not, like a lot of other places because here you can actually get behind the camera. Here you can actually do the engineering and you can be involved. You're gonna do the work. And it saves you a fortune and you get to learn all this cool stuff that you need to know anyway because you're an audiovisual guy. And it allows us to have a revenue stream for our studio to get better cameras and better lights and that to make more educational videos. And it all, it's all cycle, it all feeds itself. And at the same time, the studio that's a real working studio is a place where we're doing a class that's called Day in the Life of a Rockstar. Now, imagine a couple hundred bucks, cheap, okay, one or two hundred bucks. You as a high school or a college kid can come down and, and you sign up on a website and you say, okay, I wanna do this and, and you know, rock out on that. We pick the, the next six names off the top of the list on the website. And these are kids that don't know each other, they've never met, no idea. We just put them together. And for a summer, they come here, one day a week for like six, eight hours a day. And we take them through the entire process. It starts out by we give them each, uh, we put them in a room and say pick any musical instrument in this room you want. You can have any, I mean tubas and clarinets and synthesizers and guitars and bass and drums, anything. I mean we got a drum set over there to make Neil Peart jealous. <laughs> I mean, anything you want. It doesn't matter if you can play it or not. That, that doesn't matter. And you just pick an instrument and now we take this group of kids and we take them through the very basic concepts of music composition and they're going to write 12 songs. And we take the one that, that sounds the least bad and we make a music video around that song. And after they write them, we go in the studio, in, in our proper professional studio with all the exact same gear that everybody out there is using. I mean, there, there's hundreds of thousand dollars of equipment in that room. And they get to walk in the studio and they get to turn the knobs and they get to learn signal routing and patching and the math and the science and the technology step by step of everything that goes into writing 
recording, tracking, mixing, effects, everything to record a real, proper studio album. The music's going to be terrible, <laughs> but that doesn't matter because they're making an album. These are high school kids making a real album in a real studio, and it doesn't cost them hundreds of bucks an hour. And at the end of it, we do the video out here, and then we, real roadies with a real limo and a real truck, we load it all up, they go to a local venue in town, and they get to play one live show. So now they've done one album, one music video, and one live show, and at the end of it, each kid gets 25 CDs pressed that has every bit of media that they recorded, all the songs and the video and the show, all on the CD, and you know the, the people there are like their mom's gonna get a copy, you know stuff like that, and it's it's hokey, but it's fun and it's engaging and it's making this real to them, and they've experienced a taste of what it's really like to be a rock star. It isn't just walking out on stage; it's you know you've got to do all this work that goes with it. That's a couple hundred bucks. It's cheap, and it can be done cheap. It, and you and you're you're not going out of business doing stuff like that. No, I mean that's that's a kind of. I mean, can you imagine how many kids will want to sign up for that? I mean, this, it's, it's simple, but nobody's doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we've, so that, that there is just a taste of how the studio part pays for itself. So the studio will generate money as a project studio. The studio will generate money doing the classes. It'll generate money doing the videos because we get ad revenue on the videos. So when you watch these guys, click the ads. And, <laughs> and that's how it works. And, and the videos are also marketing and promotion. And it's all about getting people excited about building and creating and thinking. And that's what it's all about. It's, it's like if you could go to Mythbusters and hang out. It's a real place. So we've got the, the benefit of having videos on the internet, and that's cool, and you can waste your time watching that stuff and just you know, blow off an hour at work. It's like, hey, what's Duck doing today? Oh, hey, they're playing with high voltage, cool. And it's fun. But at the same time, you can get in the car and come here. And you can come and play with high voltage, and you can be in the videos, and you can be a part of it. It's real. And it, that's what makes it different. This is a place for people that care about real things. This is not a place for people that think Paris Hilton is news. This is a place for people that matter. And that changes the whole game, man. This, this is how we get jobs. This is how we create jobs and we bring manufacturing back to the United States. This is how we change the world by giving people the tools and the materials and the ability to think and do whatever they want. And once you do that, the whole game changes. Okay, so that's well and good. Can, can I just poop on the party a little bit? It, it all sure. Has, a lot of it sounds like a huge lawsuit waiting to happen. Do you have problems getting insurance? Or we anything? have, we have, you don't want to know what we pay on insurance. <laughs> we, um, okay, as far as the lawsuit side of things, because I, we get that a lot. So let me get this straight. They let you in an enclosed space with high voltage and kids. Yeah, yeah, it's fun too. Um, first off, we've been doing this for about 15 years. We've never, ever killed anybody. We've had a few that we wanted to, but the way we've got it worked out is we're going to be able to kill one student, just like totally blow them up, and we're saving that for the most annoying student ever. We've had, there's a list. We've, we've got a list and a secret vault locked away of, of who really should be the kid, but we, we haven't picked one yet. There will be a golden ticket contest, though. Um, we have massive insurance. We have all, no problem at all getting lawyers that will help us out um, because, because we have an idea with universal appeal, we get a lot of support in that. We understand that there are risks involved, but we're fanatical about safety. And that's why there's certain things that we do and certain things we don't. We do a lot with high voltage because with high voltage, it's very repeatable, it's very predictable. The laws of physics are laws for a reason. We don't do chemistry. A, because I'm not that good at chemistry. And the people that we have that are that good at chemistry aren't local members. I mean, we've got guys all over. We have members in all 50 states and like 30-something other countries. So we've, we've got these people, but they're not here. And if I can't do it here, and if I can't do it safely, where it's under absolute rigorous control, we don't do it. Not for the public. I mean, what we'll do here for videos, where it can be fast and loose, and if we blow something up, that's no big deal. That's fine. But what we do when there's kids in a room is a totally different ballgame. That's, that's where, OK, we're playing with dancing goop today but I have to make it exciting. So we play with high voltage for school groups in that. But there's a big cage. You'll see when you go into high voltage, there's a big cage and you can't get within 20 feet of it. And electricity is very predictable. It's not magic. It's magic to a lot of people that don't understand it, but it's my job to get rid of the magic 
is to say, no, it's volts and amps and watts, and this is simple, and it's science, and we can do this over and over and over again. And with high voltage, you can always stand 20 feet away and push the big red button. With chemistry, things can just magically happen in front of you. We don't do that. <laughs> so we've, we've never had any problem with anything like that. Our insurance guy is a member. He knows and loves us. We go through, um, I think it's Wilson Insurance in town. They're great guys. We've done business with them for years. And they handle all the insanity we throw at them. And, and we've come and we're like, OK, guys, we're going to be launching. We're, we're going we're to launch rockets. Or we're gonna, we did one this past summer. We're going to set off airbags, automotive airbags. Because people have no idea how powerful an automotive airbag is. I mean, that thing will mess you up. So we're like, we're going to be setting off airbags. And he's like, you're going you're gonna to do what? We're, OK, you, this is for video? I was like, yeah, it's for video. OK, well, it's cool then. And, and they take good care of us. But we spend, it's not cheap to do what we do. And there's a reason why we're the only people in the world doing it. I mean, we spend a fortune in electricity. Right? And consumers doesn't donate squat. They, we have begged, we've asked, we're like, guys, we're teaching electrical safety. We'll do it for your people. No, nope, not helping you. Um, we have massive expenditures in insurance and materials and supplies, because this is a place where things get broke all the time. People come here and they break tools, and we have to pay to fix them. I and mean, the robot up front, the big Jeff robot right now, is broken. It, I can't turn it on for you because it's messed up. OK, we'll wait. It's going to cost 10 grand to fix the thing, but we'll get there. Um, so there's a lot of expense in things like that. Um, I don't know. What's next? Well, I, I want to go back, because I'm still trying to make the leap. You were, you were at Grand Valley. You understood that you didn't want the piece of paper. But how do you go? I mean, a lot of people. How do you get from that to this? How do you, yeah. How do you okay. not get from that to doing drive through like at Wendy's? I'm like, <laughs> how do you get from that to this? Because what did you do after you left Grand Valley? Just I did this. You While came I, straight to this building. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> OK. When I was at Grand Valley, I was a teenager. Um, and I had a day job. I was Chuck E. Cheese, actually, for All a right. while. And I, I needed a way to be able to tinker and make a living. So Grand Valley throws a lot of computers in a dumpster. Well, they used to. This is back before recycling was king. Me and my weirdo buddies were very big into dumpster diving. And I encourage you to be as well, man. Get, <laughs> Find a dumpster and crawl into it. There's all kinds of neat parts out there. But we would go dumpster diving at, around the university and industrial places in town and get old computers and stuff like that. And we'd build things out of it. Like we took uh, a bunch of steel tubing and a seat, like uh, the bus station seats where there's like five of them on a single bar. We took one of those. We got a, a surplus army parachute and, we, and some old bicycles, welded it all together. And we made this cart with a seat in the middle, and it was a big triangle with bike wheels on each corner, and unfurl the parachute, and we had this wind-powered cart. And if you've ever been out to Grand Valley, it's really windy there all the time. So we had this cart that do like 40, 50 miles an hour across the parking lot. And that lasted great for about three days before the police caught on. We're like, what are you guys doing? And yeah, so we got in a lot of trouble over that. But they, it got attention. And it was like, we're, we're real guys, just college kids, building stuff, and we like to share this stuff. It's not, this isn't a place like the rest of the world where it's like, this is my invention, and it's mine, and you can't have it, and I'm going to go patent it and make a lot of money. No. This is a place where it's like, hey, look what I made. Can you help? I, I needed to do this, and I did this part, but I need you to do this part. And everybody here has something to offer. And we work together to build stuff. And we did that at Grand Valley, where we were building things. And we took the computers that we were getting out of the dumpster, and we'd remodel them and clean them all up and fix them and all that and sell them for like 50 bucks or 100 bucks a piece to college kids who are broke and they don't care if it's a four-year-old computer as long as it works. They just need something that'll check email and write papers and get on the internet. That's all they care. They're, these aren't the guys that want to do the latest, greatest gaming rigs and all that. Those guys build their own computers anyway. So selling computers for 100 bucks a piece, we started to generate money. And then we didn't have to have a real job. And we could do computers for three days a week and play the other four days of the week. And since I wasn't a real student, I only went to the classes that I cared about. I, I didn't have to take the gen ed stuff because I didn't care about having a well-rounded education. If I want to learn something, I go, I take the class, I learn it. And that grew. And we got more and more people. And pretty soon, we went from half a dozen guys hanging out in an on-campus apartment to we had 30, 40 people that were getting together on a regular basis, just wandering in and out. There was no set schedule to it. It wasn't like we get together Saturdays at 8 o'clock. No, it was just, you know, come out over to Dex place, and we'll hang out, and we'll learn how to weld this week, or solder, or whatever. 
And from there, we got a 26,800 square foot building in downtown Grand Rapids, right in the heart of the ghetto, down at, a, it was on the corner of Ionia and Commerce, 344 Ionia. So it was like we had crack whores on the, on the front stoop of the place, it was bad. We cleaned it all up. Uh, the building had sat abandoned for years. It had like half a dozen homeless guys in it. We got the building for nothing because the guy just wanted somebody in there to run the other people out. And we cleaned it all up. We put a ton of work into it. And right when things were really taken off, it completely fell apart. In the summer of 99, it went totally off the rails. The, the city condemned the building and we lost it. So we lost everything. We moved here in October 99 and it was me, one other member in the world. We had two members, and the other guy was out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. And we started from nothing. I had 53 bucks to my name in a busted car, and we still have the car. It's one of the geek mobiles now. And, and it just, we kept pushing, and we kept building new projects, and we made more videos, and, and we, we just got school groups involved, and more and more people got involved. And now we own this building, free and clear, no mortgage, no rent, no nothing. Um, that may change because the township of Kalamazoo, it, for reasons that we cannot begin to understand, we are a federally certified 501c3. We're a nonprofit. We do not understand why this, the township of Kalamazoo has just, all on their own, ignored our 501c3 and decided that we have to pay property taxes. And not only do we have to pay property taxes, we have to pay all the back taxes for as long as we've been a nonprofit. And now they want like $50,000 and they want it right now. Um, the, one of our staff, Moose, is over at the township offices at this moment paying them $1,000 that we can't afford to pay taxes that we shouldn't have to pay. And they're working very hard to tax us out of existence which is a big reason why after being in Kalamazoo for 10 years, we went out. You know, we've, we've tried really hard here. We've had huge support from the community. All the schools love us, all, all the, the people like us, but we can't get, nobody knows we're here. The right people don't know that we're here. And we need people to take us seriously and realize that, hey, we're out here, we've been here for 15 years, we're working our hearts out. Look at what we've done, come be a part of this. And because they don't watch the videos, these, these aren't the people that, you know, it's the white glove and pearl crowd. And because of that, we're like, okay, let's move to Grand Rapids where we've got a huge following, there's a ton of support for us there, and we can get a better building, because this place isn't nearly big enough for what we're doing. We've got 18,000 square feet here, and it's packed to the rafters. And we want to go to Grand Rapids, where we've got a 160,000 square foot facility, where we can raise the money to do what we want to do, and get it started and build Avalon, where we can have a 160,000 square foot facility, where we can have 300,000 people a year there, and take it to the world stage. And we simply can't do that here because we can't get the local community support. And that's why we called you. <laughs> well, why not take it one step further? Why not just go to Silicon Valley or Austin or someplace that's Because it's already, it's already there. The, this, is, this is Silicon Alley. You know, they've got Silicon Valley out in California. And, and you've got, we could go to San Francisco and I'd get millions of dollars in a minute and a half and we'd be set. We could walk in the door at Cisco and say, look what we're doing, be a part of this. And, and we've gone to that. We've been, we went to the Maker Fair in Austin, Texas. Stole the show. We were huge. They loved it. The, all the, the musical Tesla coils you see on the internet, yeah, Geek Group members invented those. So we went to there with musical Tesla coils and rocked the place. It was great. But we want to do it here. We want to make a difference in Michigan because Silicon Valley does not have double-digit unemployment. We do. This is a place where Michigan is built on manufacturing. It's built on real workaday technology. And we can bring that here. And now with all the biomed stuff coming into this part of the state, I mean, this is Kalamazoo. We've got Stryker, we got Pfizer, we got all that right here. We, there's jobs going out of this town like it's out of style. I mean, Kalamazoo's lost like, what, 5,000 jobs in the past three or four years alone? There's a chemical plant that's less than two minutes drive from here. It's a 40-acre site that's sat completely empty and abandoned for the past five, 10 years. Nothing's happening there. It's in a little city called Parchment. It's right next to town. It's dead. Their paper mill died. That put 2,000 people out of work. The chemical company died. That was another few hundred people. We tried to get the building donated because they can't sell it. It's a chemical plant. Not, that loud, not, not a big market of people who are like, yeah, you know, I want to buy an old chemical plant. That'll be fun. I can just imagine the environmental fun that that'll be. Well, we're a nonprofit. We still have to meet all the same rules with the DEQ and the EPA and that, but the resources that we bring to bear are radically different than a company that has to justify expenses and turn a profit at the end of the year. We don't have to do that. 
We can get on the internet and say, I need 500 college kids to come down here right now and pick up shovels and rakes and implements of destruct uh, destruction, and we're going to clean this swamp up and make a school. And that's something that I can get people to rally behind. That's my job. I get people to come and get excited and do stuff. But if you own a chemical company, you can't do it because nobody wants to be a friend of a chemical company. It's just not trendy. They wouldn't donate the building. They offered to sell it to us for nothing. But I couldn't get the local support to buy it. We could do it right now. $5 million. We could have a 40-acre facility with a million square feet and rock out and be the greatest thing that has happened to Kalamazoo in the past 20 years. But I can't get economic development to care because we're not Western Michigan University with $200 million in the bank and you know the white glove and pearl crowd because we're the weird guys. We're the guys out on the edge of town that, that blow stuff up. And they don't realize that this matters. You, you need the university side of things. You need that world of established degree granting institution. But you need the real guys as well, the guys that, are, that, that aren't going to get degrees. And they're not stupid, but they're getting turned into punchlines. They're getting marginalized. The electricians and carpenters and plumbers. When's the last time you saw a plumber on TV who wasn't a punchline? You know, they're always 300 pounds with a big butt crack. Okay, that's a smart guy doing a hard job. That plumber's making 70 bucks an hour. I don't make 70 bucks an hour. <laughs> yeah. I'm blowing stuff up. I'm doing physics and I'm doing all the egghead stuff. I don't make 70 bucks an hour. These people are getting turned into punchlines because nobody's bothering to stand up and say, hey, these are real people doing things that you need done because they know how things work. And you need these people. And it's my job to stand up and say, hey, let's, let's help them. Let's bring this back into our society and treat them with dignity and respect and honesty and ethics and all the things that nobody's talking about anymore because it's not cool. Well, the minute you put the geek group on the front door, you don't have to work to be cool anymore. I quit. I gave up trying to be cool a long time ago. I, I want to come to work every day and love my job. And that's all that matters. If I can come in here every day and blow stuff up and make things and, and get one more kid excited about this is a volt and this is an amp and this is how to make a Tesla coil. Uh, that's that's it. That's all I care about. I want to change the world. So yeah, it seems to be a message that's been resonating online. Are, are you guys sort of spiking on YouTube, or you, you just reach we, number two sort of gradually? Is it gradually? It took. I mean, we when we started making videos, we were doing it with a three hundred dollar camcorder that we got third hand from a guy who worked in the repair shop, and he couldn't fix it. He was sick of beating on it, but it worked if you had the wire just right. Oh, it was bad, bad. But we started making videos for that. We put up a half dozen videos and they, they got over a million hits. We have videos, our earliest videos, with the worst technology, have over a million hits. So we're like, okay, well this is a way that we can reach people outside of our local area. And it grew. And, we, and then we, you know, we, now we're using $6,000 cameras and, and it's, it's professional. I mean, we're, we're in high def. We're a real show. <laughs> and, and it's exploded. And, it's, and in the early days, it was like spike and then nothing and then spike because we go months without putting a video out. Now we're putting out new videos every couple of days. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten, we've learned workflow. We've learned how to edit. We've learned how to do CGI. We've learned how to do all the stuff that we didn't know you had to do. And we've proven that normal people, I mean, he's a 17 year old high school kid. Okay. He does the production here. He's the camera guy. He's, he's the guy, he's Mikey, but you've seen him in a million of the videos. Mm -hmm. and, real people, guys like you and me, that aren't professional broadcasters. I didn't go to full sale. I didn't, I didn't do that stuff. I'm just a guy. It's a camera. You press record and you figure the rest out, like f-stops and all that jazz. I mean, we'll, we'll get there. But it's about getting the image onto the internet. Well, we're geeks. We can figure that out. Mm -hmm. And once you do that, now we reach the world. And now we've got members from all over. We went from being a half dozen guys in town to having membership all over the world. And we can bring these resources together because it, it's, it's open source research and development, like, like Linux, where you can, there's two ways to do it. You can do the Microsoft way and say, I'm going to take millions of dollars and I'm going to hire a thousand people and we're going to do this. Or you can say, hey, I've got this really cool idea and I'm a smart guy, but I can't do this on my own. I'm smart enough to know that I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I'm not a god, I'm just a geek. But I want you to help. And you're a smart guy, and you like to tinker, and let's do this together, and let's get Ravi in, and, let's, and it doesn't matter if they're black or white or straight or gay or American or, or whatever. They're people with brains, and that's all that matters. It's what can you do. 
and you put them together and out pops really cool stuff, whether it's software or hardware or brick and mortar or anything. And you can build a company this way. But and you're not building a company. You're <laughs> we're, we're, we're a real company now. I mean, we're a federally certified 501c3 nonprofit. We've, oh. our budget, I mean, compared to a lot of places, we're a joke. I mean, our entire operating budget a year is only a couple hundred thousand dollars. But I mean, you're not a company in the sense that you're not out to make profit. You're a nonprofit. No, you're not. not out to pay taxes to the local governments and to, you know, do all of that. No, that I'm, stuff I'm, that, I'm out to create jobs. I'm out to help other people build companies. I mean, this is a place where ideas get turned into real things, and therefore those real things turn into real companies. You can come here with an idea, and a year later you have a company, and now you're creating jobs. You have to hire a dozen guys to do your thing, and those guys pay taxes, and those guys help the economy. And it's, it's the trickle-down approach. Just because we don't pay taxes, well, the university doesn't pay taxes either. They're a nonprofit, just like we are. The hospital doesn't pay taxes. Have you ever seen a hospital that wasn't accused of making a pile of money? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're, we're not in this to get rich. I will never make $100,000 a year. I'm fine with that. I don't care. There's far more important things than money. But at the same time, I'd like to not have to live on bagels and ramen noodles. I, I don't want to go broke doing this. And if I can get to the point where I personally can make 20000 a year, I'm going to be thrilled. And that's nothing. I mean, hell, interns make more than that. <laughs> and, and, but we don't need that much. The, what we're doing isn't expensive. They, they built a museum in town, right? In Kalamazoo Valley Museum, okay? They raised $20 million to build that in nine months, and it sucks. It's great as a museum goes, but it's just a museum. It's like every other museum. It's like going to your grandmother's house. It's cold, it smells funny, and you can't touch anything. That's not what we do here. This is the exact opposite of that. And if I can get the right people to see what we do and to hand us 20 million, look at what we've done with squat, what we've done out of our own pocket. Just imagine what I can do with 20 million dollars. And once we have that initial push, once we have that first round of support, we're set. Because everything after that generates its own revenue and we're cool and we don't have to walk around with our hand out. I, our fundraising in town, our primary source of fundraising is a computer shop. We run Applied Intellect. It's a regular computer shop, just like any other. It's a break and fix shop. But the difference is you have a choice. You can go to Best Buy, where you pay them money, that money goes to corporate. Or you go to AI, where you pay us money, we do the same thing for the same price. I mean, we're a little bit cheaper, but not enough that's like, oh my god, you got to go to the Geek Group. It's only $5 and they'll fix your entire house. But the idea is that money, 100% of the profits from AI, go here. They help us do programs and events. And just like you have a pledge drive and you guys sell tote bags and stuff like that, it's the same thing. Except we're not, you know, we don't take over the station for two weeks on, on here saying, send us money for the love of God! Please think of Bert! Think of Sesame Street! And, and it works and it's important and you need to do that because you guys don't have commercials. Well, we don't have commercials either. We have a computer shop. Computer repair is hard to do over radio. I understand that. <laughs> but we have a brick and mortar facility where you can go and get your computer fixed and it's just like everywhere else, but where are you going to go? If you have the choice between going to Best Buy or going to us, you're going to go to us. Because you don't care. You want your computer fixed. That's all you want. If you can get your computer fixed and we're in town and this helps the community and we're teaching kids about science, you're going to go here. So the problem is nobody knows it's there. We just, we just opened the shop so business is dead because the people that know about us swear by us. I mean, we've got a lot of word of mouth advertising. But we need to get the word out. We need a microphone in the community. Because I can, I can put videos on the internet and they get seen by people all over the world. But Ravi in Pakistan is not going to come to my computer shop in Kalamazoo. And I need people that will. And if I can get just every college student in just Kalamazoo to come to our shop to get their computer fixed, I can make all the money I need to run the geek group without needing any outside support. It can be done. It is possible. I just need people to know we're here. Mm -hmm. And once people know we're here, once people understand what we're doing, it's set. It's easy. It, do what you love. The money will come. All right.